good afternoon, good people. How are you doing? Welcome to November. It's a beautiful, wonderful month. And we're almost coming towards the end of the year. Eh, what do we have to show for this year? It doesn't have to be something you have to show, but even to yourself. What are you proud of? What steps have you made? What have you recovered from? What are you working towards? How has the year been for you? We'll do the, that video and we'll ask those questions uh, next month. Next month is December, you guys. Wow, like it's been, like the, the year has literally flown like this in front of our eyes. And it's actually, this month is actually my wedding anniversary, you guys. It's, it's, been 12 months imagine how time flies when you're married <laughs> now i'm just messing with you so i'm also excited about that we are so happy with my partner and we are feeling blessed and we feel thankful to god and it's a milestone there are people who don't make it to one year to this far so uh yeah so I'm also excited about that. So November is a wonderful month. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Modoni Mukirin Joroge. I am a mindset coach and a personal development coach. So welcome home. We're here to heal. We're here to help one another. We're here to work on our emotional and mental wellness. So this is home, yeah? Feel at home. We don't judge here. Yeah, we cry together, we laugh together, and we help one another emotionally, mentally, and in all those situations. So. What are emotional triggers? Huh? I don't know if you've ever, something has ever happened to you. Maybe someone says something to you or you just imagine something. And then immediately you start crying. You become sad. You start having panic, those feelings of panic. Yeah, you start having sweaty palms. You start, something happens and then it takes you back to feelings of a situation that has happened before. So triggers, emotional triggers are basically feelings of distress, yeah? Emotional triggers uh, come from events, are basically events or experiences or things that are not very pleasant um, that have happened to you in the past. So maybe 2014 something happened to you, uh, you went through bullying, you went through just something that's not very nice and you of course maybe had uh, feelings of um, stress and maybe you cried a lot, you were angry. So right now, anything that takes that gets closer to reminding you of what happened in 2014 takes you back to the emotions you had in 2014. They are called the emotional triggers. And emotional triggers happen regardless of our current mood. Emotional triggers are associated with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder yeah so you went through a stressful situation so much it affected you in some way and now in your current life no matter how much money you have no matter how good you look in some in some situations and in some instances you get triggers that take you back to that helpless emotional state let me give you an example with myself so um at some point, uh, when I was growing up, I went through a bit of trauma. I, I was in boarding school. I hated it, you guys. And I used to get angry. Like, you know, that anger, the one for um, really the, 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 the epitome of anger. I used to get really angry. And then I used to have, I used to get sharp pains in my head and shoulder and in my shoulder at the same time like this. I used to get, so I used to, because it's the same time my head and my shoulder are ringing pain like a sharp, like a stab pain a stab pain a stab pain <laughs> stab pain a stab pain at the same time so i that happened used to happen then i also used to started yeah let me first give that example so uh later on later on i went after boarding school i went to campus i worked up hustled so much done so many jobs later on Every time I used to imagine someone hurting me or someone telling me mean things, I used to get the same reaction. I used to get the same sharp pain in my head and on my shoulder. That was an emotional trigger. At first, I didn't know about it until I started doing the inner work and still, I, until I started working on myself. It's when I was like, you know what? This is not normal. This is not kawaida. And then at some point, I remember there's a time I'd gone to hospital for a completely different issue. And I asked the doctor about it. And then he called it a name. I don't remember what he said, but he said it's a physical reaction to anger, to emotions. So that was one of my emotional triggers. Another one is anxiety, not attacks, anxiety. 
I used to I, my anxiety started when I was in boarding school, like I said, oh God. And and from this, I, I don't think, they say never say never, but I don't think I will ever take my kids to boarding school. I hated it. I hated boarding school with a person, I still do. I don't know, okay, if, you, if your child loves it, well and good. Well, I didn't, and it didn't work for me. So I started my anxiety back in boarding school. And in 2016, 2017, 2017, I had a lot of anxiety. And I could not trace it back. But then it was not new. You know how something happens to you and then you feel deja vu. You feel like this is not a new feeling because I had experienced it before. So and when uncertain things would happen or I'm in situations where I'm not sure about the outcome, I used to really get a lot of anxiety. And that anxiety was a trigger, was emotional triggers from my boarding school times. I don't get that. I don't even when I'm when I'm um, when I'm expecting something to happen or when I'm not sure about the outcome. I never get that anxiety, uh, that anxiety that that uh, paralyzes you. You know, like panic attacks. That para I don't get those things anymore. So I want to talk about how uh, how to identify your emotional triggers and what to do with them. But first of all, why is it important for you to work on your emotional triggers? Because uh, if, if something happened to you in 2015, 2014, or things that happened to you at a particular time in your life that were hurtful, that were not pleasant, that made you question yourself, that made you feel less of a person, that made you go through rejection, that criticized you, that made you feel less worthy, you know all those things. Because that's where it comes from. Something happened to you that made you feel some type of way towards yourself, that you, you got angry, developed panic attacks, you have those that physical reaction and all those, like what I've spoken about in my case. Um, if it happened to you in 2015 and you still get the same triggers, it means you, you've not moved on. You're still stuck on those things and on whatever happened to you. And you're not able to overcome that. And you keep going through panic attacks. You keep going through episodes of extreme anger. You keep going through, um, you know, like uh, extreme crying and uh, crying for no reason and all those things. That's not normal. It's not normal. And let's, let's not normalize pain. And let's not normalize some of these things. Yeah? Life can be better and can be happy. So how... So how to identify emotional triggers? How to identify that one thing that makes you cry controllably? Someone can tell you something, your boss or your neighbor says something, or just someone you're having a conversation with, but then it gets you so mad, or you feel like you just want to cry, you just want to start getting emotional on that person, or you feel just angry, or you feel you start getting anxious, you start having sweaty hands, you start uh, your stomach starts rambling, you start getting the the stab pain, the stab pain I've spoken about, like in my case. Um, this is what you can do to identify those things. The first thing is to listen to your mind and body. Listen to yourself. Pay attention to what is happening to yourself. If something happens, and if you've been, maybe in the morning you came late for work and your boss said something, but you've been angry the whole day, you cannot sleep at night, the following day you're still angry, you need to ask yourself, am I really angry because of what that that guy said, or what is it reminding me? What is what that person said reminding me? Why is it taking back me back to identify? Listen to your body and your soul. Another thing is to take a step back. Yeah, I remember uh, when I used to have that pain, like the sharp pain in my head and my shoulder at the same time. At first, I, I, I thought it's something I should take meditation for. I, I thought I, it disturbed me for a while. But when I decided to pay attention to it and to ask myself at what time and at what point does it happen, yeah? And I realized it happens when I think about a situation that makes me really mad or that would make me mad. And it because that time when I used to get that pain, that time, the initial times when I was in boarding school, it was things that were making me angry at the time. But now as a grown up, I was getting that pain, imagining of something that would make me angry. I don't know if I'm making sense. I would get the same reaction even if the anger hasn't happened. So I had to really pay attention to my mind and body. And number two is to step back. I had to really uh, tell myself, Modoni, relax, breathe in, breathe out. If I'm having a conversation with someone and they say something that someone has said to me before that really hurt me, I just uh, take a minute from them. I just walk around, I just take a phone call, 
naingia Instagram kidogo I, I, I take a step back from whatever because I don't want it I don't want it if, if someone says something and then I feel like it's triggering me and I'm getting emotional I don't want it to continue to a point where I start crying I want to stop it before it can get there yeah another thing you can do is to trace their roots oh this is so important anytime you find yourself extremely sad or anytime you find yourself very angry you are so angry you can't sit down yeah and a lot of times those situations don't warrant for that anger and i've realized since i worked on myself i don't even get that angry that anger my anger never gets there i can be frustrated yes i can feel a bit of anger and frustration but it never gets to a point where i'm not able to think straight at that point yeah at the same time i know where my uh, anxiety was coming from and my headache and shoulder pain was coming from so i know where it comes from i know where why and and i know any time i think of someone maybe making me feel less of a person someone making me feel i'm not important would would bring that feeling yeah yeah so trace it back to your roots i'll get to a point where i'll talk about what to do this is how to identify your triggers that i'm talking about at this time now and then after this now i'll talk about what to do so another thing you can do is get curious get curious so probably at what point does it happen a lot is it uh, when everybody else when anybody tells you just something mean does that take you back or is it specific people probably your parents probably your boss probably your crush or your boyfriend uh get curious about when those emotional triggers are happening and through which circumstance maybe is if anybody senior tells you tells you those things or um uh if you're not feeling very you are at a, at a point in life where you're not feeling very confident or just get curious about those emotional triggers about those ex, those um those times of extreme sadness about those times where you're crying too much about your anxieties get curious ask yourself questions about them that is how to identify your emotional triggers now you've identified you've identified you know what i was uh, sexually harassed so every time uh, a, a man tries to touch me or talk to me i just feel like uh, i can't or i just feel like i'm get too angry or identify you've already identified the triggers by this point i've taught you how to do that so now what do you do to get over these triggers what do you do with the emotional triggers you don't want to keep crying you don't uh, you don't want to keep going through the same emotions over, over and over again you don't want to keep getting angry over the same things over and over again right so what can you do about emotional triggers the first thing on your feelings and i say it is something i also teach my coaching clients give your feelings a name for example i am maybe sitting somewhere waiting for someone and then thoughts come to my head and then i start feeling emotional i feel like crying i feel what i always ask myself okay mudoni what is this what's happening and then i'm able to identify i'm either frustrated i am angry i am sad i am broke i am whatever it is i am i can on your feelings okay at this time i am feeling not good enough i'm feeling some type of some type of weight towards myself so on that's an example on your feelings what are you feeling don't run away don't try to ignore it on whatever it is you're feeling yeah another thing is to give yourself space physically it's also something i spoke about um when i was talking about how to identify your triggers take space go for a walk take some water uh start another topic yeah give yourself space because sometimes um someone might say something to you and then you automatically lash out or you automatically start crying and blaming them and all that that and then after a while you realize they were not the problem you were the problem that what or whatever they say did not warrant that kind of a reaction or they didn't come from a bad place they were maybe trying to um help you in some way or they were trying to pass a message but then you interpreted it from what another person had said some other time yeah so give yourself space before you react uh if you feel like it's taking you back or it's it's giving you anxiety you're starting to sweat some people 
have emotional triggers that even cause diarrhea. Like you get sick physically and you even have a fever and all those things. So I told you mine was, one of mine was physical. So take time, take yourself away from the situation, listen to a song so that it can, you can also calm down. Another thing is to keep an open mind, keep an open mind. Um, that time, this is what I tell myself. That time when those things happened to me, I didn't know what to do. I was a child, I was helpless, they, they'd never happened before. Now that I'm a grown up, I can be able to know how to respond, yeah? I can also be able to tell, is this person really genuine or they're just trying to hurt my feelings? Yeah, so keep an open mind. Don't automatically assume everyone is out here to get you. And some people also treat you according to how they feel about themselves. Sometimes it's not about you. I'm not saying you're not allowed to respond to them or tell them off, but a lot of times it's not even about you. They're coming also from a place of their own trauma, their own triggers and their own issues. So be open-minded. When something happens that you feel like you're gonna lose control or it's gonna take you out of yourself, um, keep an open mind. Sometimes just look at them and wonder, why would this person tell me such a thing? Like, well, I, as in, the problem is this person, it's not me. Yeah? So another thing to do is to communicate what you're feeling, what you're going through, what that does to you, especially in your romantic relationship or with someone, or even with your friends, people who are really, I have friends who are very, some of my friends were very tight. Like we have very good emotional connections. We can really talk about our emotions and it's a safe space and it's okay and we don't judge. So you really want to communicate to that person about uh, when they say something about your body type or when they say something about how you do things, it, it makes you feel bad and it makes you feel like they're not on your side or whatever. Please communicate. Communicate your triggers even to your husband, even to your boyfriend. Tell them, this is what I went through and, and, and at some point this has happened to me or I've been in situations that made me feel like I was not a woman enough. I was in situations that made me feel like uh, that, that lowered my self-esteem, that made me feel less of a person, yeah, that hurt me. So every time you do this, or every time this happens, it takes me back there. So I'd appreciate if, we, if, you, if you can stop doing that to me, you know communicate those things yeah it will help especially in your safe space with your with your boyfriend with your husband with your sisters or with people you really spend a lot of time with. let them know because some people just are just moving on with their lives and some of the things they do can hurt you but they're not intentionally doing those things to hurt you another way to communicate i'll, I'll do a whole video about communication another way to communicate is to start the sentence with i I feel frustrated every time you talk about the shape of my body, yeah? I feel, don't start the topic with, you always talk about you because they feel attacked and the first instinct is not even to sympathize with you or to see their mistake. When you start a, a sentence with, you did, you did, they feel attacked and the first instinct is to attack back or to block the attack. That's, that's a normal human uh, reaction. So every time you want to communicate, I'll, uh, let me know every time because sometimes you lose it and you just, oh, you, 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 you. But I'll try every time you're communicating to start with what you feel. Uh, I, I always feel neglected every time you're spending so much time with your friends and you're not considering me. That's a very good constructive statement. Cindy, another thing is getting professional help, coaching and therapy. And I'm here for you guys. Book a session. Take a package with me. Let's work on emotional triggers. Let's work on these things. These things are things I have gone through before and overcome. And I've also gone through my coaching training. So I am really excited to work with such cases and to help you go through such things. So seek help. You don't have to struggle through things alone. Through these things alone and you're working so hard. You don't have to cry every day. And you're so hungry. And you're feeling you're not good enough. Everybody else is just triggering you. Every, anything, any, you're just... Kitu kidogo unavunjika. You don't have to go through that, yeah? And another thing is to identify toxic patterns. There are situations that will trigger you a lot. And there are people who are very, who are very insensitive. Beware of those people. We are not all the same. You might have gone through the same, ex uh, the same thing, 
with other people, but you experienced it different, differently. I'm sure the same people I went to with boarding school are happy and they don't, you know, and they're happy taking their kids to boarding school. I wasn't happy. So we have different experiences. And if you feel something is triggering and, and, and messing with your, with your self-esteem and, and, and affecting you so much, uh, because someone in your life keeps triggering you, no matter how much you tell them, Please let them go. Don't stay in toxic situations that are triggering your emotions, that are taking you back to that helpless young girl. Another thing is to keep a journal. It's good to write down, to write down things you're going through, to write down your emotions. I'm so huge on writing down. And even every time I do my sessions, you have to come with a book and a pen and I have to tell you, please write this, write this, write this. Yeah. And the last thing is to remind yourself. This is what I remind myself. A lot of things that we have emotional triggers for are things that have happened in the past before. I always remind myself, I am not that person. I am grown, I am experienced, and I learned from those experiences. I learned to let go of toxic people who want to hurt me over and over again. I learned, even if I'm not going to tell that person no, I can block them or I can decide I'm not going to pick their call. I learned to say no and I learned to choose myself and I learned to take my own advice, to tell myself, like those times when I go, uh, when I when I was uh, when I started healing uh, from my uh, from the anxiety attacks and from the physical head head shoulder pain, I don't know what, if there's a doctor here, please write it somewhere down there or a therapist write it. I can't remember the name. When I was healing from that, um, I always had to call myself from it and tell myself, Mudoni, Mudoni, you're fine. Mudoni, it's okay. They're not gonna hurt you. You know, mm -mm, don't let them. Don't give them that power over your emotions, you know. So it's also, it's part of what I spoke about, about creating a good relationship with yourself, becoming your own best friend and doing what? Taking your own advice, yeah? We are giving people very good advice here and we are not taking it. Take it, take it, yeah? So I wish you all the best. Please identify your emotional triggers. And, 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 and uh, as you identify them and as you work towards recovering from them, Please be kind to yourself. Be very compassionate to yourself. You are a human being like everybody else. And there are things that you will never probably have to explain or understand why they really hurt you. But they did. That's all you need to know. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave your comment down at the comment section. And also remember, we have the uh, self-awareness women's workshop on that december my very first event modernist mission very first event so please keep booking your tickets uh, tickets sale will close before the end of the month i said that so please we'll see if we can book your ticket early enough it's gonna be about self-awareness we're gonna do a lot of exercises a lot of learning a lot of fun a lot of bonding a lot of yani healing in that workshop so don't don't you dare miss out i'll put a poster here with some of the details so you can check it out and so you can make your bookings bye